travels. It goes to the people who live in the center of the block, mm -hmm. to the people that live on the other side of the, because, um, you know, all the French Quarter blocks are in squares right. and they have, you know, four streets around them. Anyway, there's uh, oh, lots of residents within each square and mm -hmm. it can go over to another square. It can go in several different directions. Mm -hmm. um, so. It's it's it not squares, it's not know. going to be a, uh, a simple matter, and now we need to move on. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, sorry. Yeah, this is uh, uh, we did recommend early in the, in the first in the, in, the, in, the, in the original study that a survey should be done of the quarter demographic. Understand the demographic. Understand the complaints. Understand you know are they full time residents? Is this a condo? All those things because then we can really start to understand. We could put pinpoints all over a map and figure out right. what's going on. Right. And who's affected the most and then figure out how to solve those problems better. But that's not part of the study, unfortunately. Maybe okay. we can get that started. Okay, yeah. I so I, agree. I mean, I don't disagree. I think all that information is valuable. So um, moving right along. <laughs> the, uh, in the event that somebody wanted to uh, have an alternate compliance that is to close the facade, there was another suggested recommendation here, 85, EVA at five feet. We may find that if that's the case, uh, as, as Jude's uh, pointing out, we may deal with 95 DVC, and that may be what we're looking at. But this is certainly much even quieter than uh, the original recommendation uh, for the open facade. But uh, one of the reasons, perhaps we should be looking at C here, okay, at that point, and just not worry about A because we're cutting out so much of the A. Okay. Are you, are you going to come up with a recommendation to close the facades on the side streets? I think that that, because we've learned something about that, that the um, some some venues are just side street. Uh, so to say that they're all closed would be to close the, the entire facade of, of, of an establishment. We, have, we do have any. Yeah, we do have that, and so that's that becomes that becomes an issue. I think that if there is an if there's a problem that's identified, that would be a great option. And, I, and we already know that that has helped out right. with, with certain circumstances. So I think that that's part of the toolbox for these places to reduce their impact on their neighbors and decide what they want to do with it. Okay, but it's always an option. So, so, the, so right now the current force is recommend hard limits mm -hmm. at the doorways, right. but then leave the businesses with a toolbox to, as to how they meet those limits. Right, so always, you do have the option, you know, like how you get there is, uh, um, yes. Have you thought about having um, a decibel level for at the door that faces Bourbon Street, but another one at the door if That's it faces a side street or is at an angle, you know, like some face the intersections and so right. they can go in all different directions? Mm -hmm. Okay, you're hired. <laughs> You'll be reporting to work uh, on Tuesday. You're going to ride back with me today? Yeah. I, I thought of another one that I was going to ask before. The speakers in the courtyards, are they outside speakers? Uh, that and O'Brien's, that's the courtyard is O'Brien's. It's in their property. Right. Is that called an outside speaker? That's, I believe so. As defined in the ordinance, it is. Really? Yeah. Seems to me that the equipment is something like a room without a room. That's that's the definition that was used. Was uh, if there were not a permanent roof over something, it was a courtyard. And, there that's, you go. and that's counted as an outside speaker, like a street speaker. Right. Right. Okay. Where did they add those speakers? Had around. Mm -hmm. They've had them since I think the eighties. In the morning. Okay, um, moving right along again, uh, uh, things that we're looking at in the future, uh, as of today, um, with housing human needs, uh, one of the things that was on the table before was dealing with the receiving properties with outside and inside levels of just, do we need to establish this now? Well, I think we're looking at what will happen if we take care of the facades first. And that means difficulties regarding inside and outside levels. If, you're going to, if you have to measure inside to see if there's a problem, it requires access, and that may be vibration travel to the ground, re-exciting a building. Uh, the, the building envelope varies. What is a reasonable expectation of the receiving structure? Is it disrepair? Is that, is that, is that going to count? 
or not. So I think this is a very important, that, that's more of where we deal with the health department and the guidelines and they look around and go, you know, this building's in good repair, this building is not. And, uh, and this is for the receiving. And then positive identification of sound source, that is, once we get them half a block away, who's making the sound? And that really becomes, that starts to become an issue. And if several sounds are out there, they might be additive and then creating a problem while each individual one is within compliance at their facade. So that's something, these are things that should be worked on once we get the first part done. Yes? If that's the case, and there's several different locations that, you know, there's like a cumulative effect wherever, that that's why. That's, well, that's, <laughs> I, I, that's a good question. You know, you're hired too. <laughs> that's, those are the questions that we're thinking about all the time. I think that's, that's what it is, is the, uh, we have um, uh, the health, again, the ma sound management group is, that's going to be part of their job is to figure this out. That's part of the training, is to figure out what to, what to do. And we may have to, in a case where everybody's operating and we can't solve the problem at that moment, we'll have to come back and check. We'll have to come back during the day and actually run some sort of test to figure out who's, what, how, how things. How do you do that? It just seems so, it seems so complex. It seems complex. That's my job. <laughs> so that's what we do, you know. It can be done. It can be done. And I think there's ways to, there's ways to, uh, there, there are ways to figure that out. I, I think that, but, but we have, we have, there's a lot of things to evaluate it, when, we, when we start dealing with receiving residences with such a complex source. If it was one source, if we were on a block and it was all residences in one bar, it'd be easy. Right? But here, it's very hard. So that's why this sort of is a secondary part of this. Okay. Can we move on next? So when you're when you're talking about <coughs> number two there on the list, uh, the I, I gather the concept there was that you may have some owners of residential property mm -hmm. that don't have caulking and windows, that have windows that rattle in frames, right. that have basically poor ceiling. And the question is, is there a standard that you put on a residence? To mitigate sound themselves in right. terms of their structure. Right. If we find that, if we find there's a complaint, or if somebody finds that there's a complaint, and we know that the sound arriving at the structure is is uh, you know maybe within reason, but inside the structure it's not, because we are expecting the envelope of the building to perform to a certain degree. That's that's where we start to it, it, it gets more complicated. So it doesn't need this is this is not like one of those things where it becomes a law suddenly because we can legislate this. This is management. Right. This is management. This in is, other this words, is, you really can't legislate that's that number two, but no, you have to put I mean, it in I, the toolbox I mean, of the of the person doing the enforcement. Right. And and and, and, and I I've been uh, uh, in the appendix E. There's a set of buildings that are measured, and and uh, we drew a line in the middle. There's a well insulated home at the top, and there's a, a poorly insulated home insulated home at the bottom. You can see the huge difference. Huge difference. So, so we think that, that we should have a Midland expectation. Well, doesn't the receiving property dialogue come into question relative to you got a complainant who, you know, uh, thinks that they have a problem with the, with the sound, and yet you go to the various clubs and everywhere else and you say, no, you don't, you know, but based on my measurements, you're really fine. Mm -hmm. But the, the person's still got a problem in, in, in their mm -hmm. mind. Right. Well, remember, we, I mentioned the, the other job I was working on where they have a, 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 someone who's hypersensitive to the sound. Here's it when it's not even there. Well, so, yes, so, we, so we, have to under, a, we have to find a way to understand that. Do you at least need a, an outside maybe reading that would you yeah, well, that's, show somebody that they didn't perhaps have a That's problem. what we're saying outside and inside levels. We're going to have to establish so, something as we move towards that. What is the receiving level? The only problem with outside levels is because we have so many different distances and we have buildings that border on courtyards so the difference between that and uh, something that's 100 feet away down the block is a big difference and and then what's what's going to be fair there that's why this is why maybe that's why maybe that doesn't that's why maybe this needs a moment while we start out with the first part because I'm just trying to think about the Litigation that could occur, you know, that others in this room want anyway, mm -hmm. um, by people who really believe they have a problem, but they really maybe they don't. But 
but yeah, well, it, it, it starts to become those sooner or later. You're gonna to have to get into. Of course, right. there is one property that is that is in litigation, uh -huh. and and um, the person who owns the property believes that the property should be left in its historic state without air conditioning, mm -hmm. without painting, and and basically with, with windows that don't seal. Mm -hmm. They believe that, mm -hmm. and and that's they're they're entitled to do that. Right. But how do you put a limitation on businesses when they're dealing with that? Can you? Well, I think this starts to get out of my... Out of your area. What, what I'm trying right. to deal with right now. That starts to become a... You know, I think that, again, reasonable expectation. That's all. And whatever that means, because we have, re we have all these things about reasonable yep. that comes up. So, I'm going to go ahead. Uh, I'm just going to breeze through this slide. We're not going to talk about it. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, we, uh, we know that the last year is not permitted under the ordinance, but we can make, perhaps guidelines can be created to minimize that impact. We talked about courtyards earlier today and loudspeakers, limiting low frequencies. It, there's no volume knob here, right? So, so we, crowd noise we can, but um, the other thing that came up during the investigation and we t uh, during these walkabouts is that the View Correct Commission decides what, what's allowed. Barriers, no barriers, can you, what kind of barriers are allowed? How high can they go? And we learned earlier today that the height of the barrier does influence our, uh, influence its ability to uh, block sound to the neighbor, okay? So this is something that's probably gonna come up. How do we get the View Correct Commission to, 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 to say, hey, you know what? These exceptions are okay because they're going to, um, there was, didn't, uh, Dude, didn't you say you had you were able to put a, uh, a plexiglass in, in an opening? I didn't put it there. I'm, I'm there now. You know, I've done it at the place we're speaking of. I didn't personally do that, but I did it at another location. Yeah. But and it was allowed. It was allowed by Bucure Commission, or well, we did it on the interior. On the interior. On the interior. Okay. The one you speaking of? Yeah, we actually had to. That was. Uh, don't quote me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. That was a court order. It was <coughs> pre my uh, meeting there. Okay. And I think that the courts. BCC. This okay. Well, out, well perhaps that Otherwise, it would not have been permitted. Perhaps that's one of the conversations that needs to actually happen. Where, where you know, being... in, in Portland, I remember reading a report where one of the, the experts had suggested the use of, of screens mm -hmm. to be able to direct and shape sound. Mm -hmm. and, and in some of our courtyards, if, if the BCC got on board, you could do non-permanent screens that would actually shape the ability of sound to get out of the courtyard. Yeah, sure. We can, we can have it hang over to bring, reflect it back down or straight up, whichever works. There's several different methods, okay? Um, this was, uh, although, although the timeline was discussed, maybe at the end of March, we're actually gonna be talking about putting legislation together and these limits and, and dealing with this. Uh, there's an approval period, there's a compliance period, Health Department enforcement in 2014, and what we know is that there's a gap in time, which makes me a little nervous because funny things happen in these time gaps when nothing, when no one's in charge. Um, so uh, we do know that uh, French Quarter Business League has enter is entertaining idea of a self-compliance period. I'm not sure how we're going to quite get this off the ground. The mayor's office is saying, "Well, no, we'll just get it going." So, so there's a, th there's a couple possibilities here. This is something that everyone should be aware of uh, and be vigilant about. Just self-compliance. Yeah, yeah. Well, if, if self-compliance is the is the is the place we we go uh, for the period, because I'm sure it's going to be. Well, there's there's creep. That, to go if you have enough months go by, there's going to be what they call creep. It's going to sound you know, levels go up. And, and you have to do. You know, there may be things that you want to do, you wouldn't do on day one. Right. There, there, there's. We're constantly trying to progress. Yeah. 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 Exactly. We're all in litigation. Right. Well, it's the compliance well, period. A, a trial, I'll call, it, I'll call it a trial period. Right. Without any enforcement. Right. It would probably be not a bad thing anyway. So let you guys. Um, unless you get self enforcement and then it, hopefully it guides it to the point where it, yeah, when enforcement comes in, there's no difference. That's right. It would be nice to have the health department active prior to our enforcement, though, well, so that they can advise. We're, we're certainly going to see what happens with all of that. I, I, you know, the timeline is not is not clear right now. Um, one issue that's come up, and this is uh, that we 
you know, everyone's free to comment on is that uh, business owners are, were, th th this, this is right, right now directed towards business owners up and down the street. And the problem is we have street amplification that occurs, and the only way we can do it constitutionally is, is regulate time, place, and manner. And um, there are some issues. Uh, you're this talking one, about Bourbon Street right now? Bourbon Street, they have. You're talking about Bourbon Street? Just Bourbon Street. Ampl amplification. And the amplification is is so loud at times that it interferes. Let's say there's a, a band playing. Well, they have to stop playing because the music in the street is so loud. And even though this is transient, let's say we get everybody turned down, now somebody else is turning up in the middle of the street. So that sort of defeats the purpose of protecting the residents. So, so what do we do with it? And manner is the only thing I can see right now. Manner meaning decibel levels at, at, at a given distance. Now, how we're going to catch people at three feet, because that's how close we're going to have to measure, or five feet. You know, they're going to, they may run up and turn down. They're going to see a stand right there. So how does it, this, it's a cat and mouse game all of a sudden. So I'm not sure how that's going to work out. And I love people's input. Um, there is 301456, which says no street performance between 8 p.m. and 6 a.m. And the, I know that the people who are representing the uh, street performers and things like that are uh, saying that is unconstitutional and needs to come off the books immediately. So, so if that's the case, then, then you know, what are hours? You know, from Portland, from uh, Portland, they said 10 p.m. is is a constitutional, constitutionally defendable time to have it to have it off the street because that's when people shift the nighttime hours. But is that will that work here? I don't know. And that's and then or do we just strike it entirely and then people can, then that leaves it open ended as to when people can perform to. Them. And that also would terrify all the residents because that's not, um, that, you know, I, we keep hearing one, another story after another story, somebody's setting up at 11 o'clock at night in somebody's bedroom. So, so this is an interesting question that we guess. What uh, I think we need to look at is just the decibel levels, and I don't know that it should matter whether the sound is coming from a club or street. Why put it there Um Okay. Because it's the sound. Right. And this is VCE, yeah, right? Yeah, right. It's VCE only is what we're talking about now. In addition to that, um, generally speaking, your busters aren't going to set up in places that are low traffic or places that don't generate tips for them. So it's not like they're going to go to a quiet residential corner and decide they're going to take it over because there's no traffic. They don't care. They don't want to be there. Um, so I would suggest the way to reg regulate the whole situation is to decibel levels only. Okay. Does how, what would you have to do to adjust the DB rates for a DB levels for what's at a door versus what a street, is an amplifier in the street? At the yeah, amplifier in the street because wouldn't you have to measure it at least three feet away from the we amplifier? We can't regulate amplified and unamplified music differently. Uh, that's part of all these constitutional issues. Uh, no, 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 but I mean, Mary Howell's but, right. blanket statement to that effect is, is incorrect. When the mayor should like to explain that there was an overly broad um, restriction on amplified music by excluding them all together, you can absolutely regulate them as long as you take care of time, place, and manner. Okay. And they can be regulated by decibel level, level, but not differently than an unamplified source. Okay, oh. but if we measured amplified or unamplified um, entertainment from the source, wouldn't it have to be at least three feet away from the source? And then how would you adjust the DB levels from what is at the door of the business? I think we'd have to adjust them using science and math at a further distance out, maybe 25 feet, 50 feet. Yeah, but once you get to 25 feet, 50 feet, you're it's too far. Every, you're, you're yeah. too far. You're too far I, think, I think in this case we're just discussing uh, Amplifiers. Right. Okay. And I know, I know, I know you, yes. What? And only, we're only like to get specifically Bourbon Street. BC, yeah. yeah. I think we're talking about amplifiers in Bourbon Street. I think that's it. Uh, I'm, I, I think that, uh, that we again, have brass bands, though, too. Uh, well, I understand. Brass, yeah. I, could, brass I guess maybe it's more behavior than. than well, my, the, then maybe, 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 uh, maybe you would all like to make a suggestion with that. I think that for, for me, it's the first step is to deal with the amplification because I think the irresponsible use of amplification is sort of, we're covering amplification generally in this whole process. Yes? But, it, I mean, that's unconstitutional just to say, well, amps, right? I mean, everyone's talking about the rules. 
Yeah, okay. You can't go up yeah. to somebody you and know, say you can't have your hands up. Well, then, uh, yeah. then okay. I'm gonna can we, uh, I'm gonna pause this for for I'm gonna, I got two more points here, and then we're gonna I'm gonna show you something I have here, and we'll mm. maybe think about it differently. Well, I just, while you have that slide up there and mention, is 30, 1456 something that's being revisited within the discussion? It, well, Lou is pointing out that it exists. And then the question is, what do we what do we do with it? Well, well, you know, because because if somebody starts enforcing it, then um, there's going to be some people who are fighting that. And and the question is, does it need to be revised, struck? It's sort of the question. So Revi you know, enforced, forgotten, revised, struck. Is your report to city council going to make any recommendation about that issue? Uh, I'm thinking about it. I'm trying to figure out what might work. Uh, what might make sense, but remember, it's my recommendation, I guess. I'm trying to look for something in the middle. Since we have the city council here. Oh, no, no, no. Well, let me be real clear. Your task was to take the myopic view of brick and mortar structure sound emanation in this particular district. When we brought in the discussion of all of those other type um, sound, everything from those. Uh, the, the motorcycles that take their mufflers off, mm -hmm. the cars that have music that are too loud, mm -hmm. to the DJ parties in neighborhoods, mm -hmm. to street musicians in the BCE area, to street musicians elsewhere, mm -hmm. to all the other things that the weed whackers, etc. Um, the debate derailed so badly that it was clear mm -hmm. that we needed to narrow it. And some of the best, most important um, iconic musicians and music were used as a shield for the real issues. Mm -hmm. And so right now we are focusing very clearly on the most expensive area in the city to operate um, and only operating the brick and mortar structures and how that affects this limited area and the people that travel to it and live around it. Mm -hmm. so I, think, I think I think the that's that is why this is brought up. That is why this is brought up is because the the, the venues themselves are going to have difficulty because they're interfe the, the business that they conduct and their compliance to this is going to be is, is going to be directly affected by the things that are immediately in front of them. And I think that that's why I'm bringing it up. I think that's why it's important um, because they you're asking people to to follow a set of rules and then another set of people don't have any rules that can actually directly affect their businesses. And I think that's why I'm bringing it up. It's, it's critical that we actually look at this and fit and, and, and if this works out and we're able to come to a resolution where the vast majority of people who are looking at this from something other than just their pocketbook are most people are basically okay with the result that we get, mm -hmm. then this process is a great process to use for the next and frankly more difficult process. Because I have to tell you, the arguments of the very wealthy to maintain their DJ sounds for a group of out-of-towners to the detriment of people from in New Orleans, it's less difficult to have those conversations. When you're talking about indigenous New Orleanians who are playing beautiful music on the street and we are starting to consider regulation of those people, mm. the balances become much more difficult to make and we need to deal with the easier issue first. If we cannot deal with this issue, we will never get to the issue of regulating, okay. if at all, okay. street music. Maybe, maybe I'll, I'll clarify what I'm talking about. The um, on the street with my with my work, the the there are people setting up amplifiers in the street that are so loud that 50 feet away I can't have a conversation. 50 feet away, I don't think that's indigenous music, and I think that's something that needs to be. That's not indigenous, okay? So 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 my point is, those people can set up 10 feet away from a bar and blow out the bar, and that and and be there for as long as they want and. And, uh, and there's no repercussions. And you're asking these other people to go ahead and 
adhere to a set of rules. And I think that it's important that we entertain that this is an issue for everyone. And you may have trouble getting people to adhere to rules when, when there's other people who don't have rules, who have the capability of, of sort of just, they're, they're sort of, they're, part, they're, they're, the, they're the elephant in the room in a way. What do we do? What do we do with that? And I understand that it's very sensitive. I understand we have constitutional rights, and I know that people are going to interpret this as an attack on some sort of indigenous music. But I don't, and that's why I'm saying amplifiers are my my issue of, of, of discussion because amplifiers don't get tired. You can put them out, and they'll just run, and you can turn up as loud as you want. And and I think that's why I'm looking at amplifiers, and and that's why I'm not looking at necessarily brass bands or anything like that at this point because. These things, because these people, these people on the street are transient. They're here, then they're gone. We say transient for a little while, but they'll be there. So not always there. But what can we do to help put this all in a in a level playing field for everyone on the street? Yes. Uh, and if a street musician or performer is uh, performing at such a level, we can't have a conversation. Aren't they already violating the current ordinance that's in place? Yeah, I think so. 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 I think we, but but where we measure from and how we do it uh, has to be changed because of the complex field. Right now, it's too far away they measure from, and so you wouldn't be able to def definitively. But again, it should just be about the source of the sound, not, not whether or not whether or not it's amplified or not it should be relevant. Well, I don't know. I'm I'm starting with amplifiers. I'm starting with amplifiers. Remember, we're not doing courtyards yet. We're not doing receiving properties yet. We're starting with facades of buildings, dealing with those things in the, in the street that, and, and these things are, uh, I, I, I can relate to the fact that there are several different sources, and there's some that have no indication. But we're starting with where we are. Okay, but. And if you, well, maybe you can help gonna, me. How is anything gonna change if, if we already have, uh, you know, an ordinance in place that deals with these things? No, that's because we're, right we're, we're, we're working towards the they're working towards the enforcement. They're, that's what they're doing. Yeah, I think I think that's what's what's on board. So, yes. Do you, do, you, do you have any measurements of the street speakers like that religious group? Yeah, uh, you have we have some numbers. Chart. We had some numbers. I think I have. Uh, um, the street uh, the that church group was 93A, 97C at 10 feet. Ten so feet. At ten feet. Well, that would be in the middle of the. They're in the middle of the street. At ten feet, away, you know, they're in the, they're in the middle of the street. In the middle of the street, so we're trying to reduce that level. That's that's that's, that's seven decimals above what we're shooting for in the middle of the street. Should be eighty-one or something in the middle of the street. Yeah, well, we're shooting for eighty-five. You know, eighty-five at the, as, as a cap. It's sort of a target. Yes. I just have a, a, a little input that. Um, you know. That segment of the VCE, which is only the first eight blocks of the Bourbon Street, it's not all of Bourbon Street, has a promenade. And that, that after what, six o'clock? Five o'clock, six o'clock? There are already safety issues because that then becomes the public right of way. And if you're putting a speaker out there that's the size of a refrigerator, you are obstructing a public right of way. And the police can enforce. Uh, you know, that ordinance that would prevent them from having that speaker on there. We have mounted police. We have EMS. We have uh, police cars that we have to respond to an emergency on Berman. If you've got speakers the size of a refrigerator out there or a performer who's put out a slick mat or whatever the other obstacles are that go on the Berman Street promenade from that during that time period, those are all safety issues that are already in code somewhere, right, Stacey? That are just not being enforced because I, for whatever reason, they're not being enforced. So perhaps there's an educational part of all of that for, for the police department to mm -hmm. give them the authority or remind them they have the authority already to take action against those things. Uh, a guy who's roping off the public sidewalk in front of a hotel mm -hmm. right. in the French Quarter to do a performance with speakers, you know, this tall, uh, is obstructing a public right-of-way, yet there is no enforcement at all. And I think 
probably for a variety of reasons, you know, with, with the police department. But nevertheless, that's that's what is happening now. So think of this in terms of safety, and as well as you know, because right, well, we're only talking about DCE. Of course, the reason we're in this building to begin with, we can't get any other. But but, the, but in terms of safety. We can even just come from from a decimal point of view, mm -hmm. is that it, it it reduces the ability for the people to have the communicate emergency communication. So, so I think that that's where we're starting. When we think about this and the the fact, uh, uh, I I understand that and I can include that in there. But the, the, there are, the, I think there's several other factors, and I, I'm not really ready to get into that right now of why it's not enforced and what people think. Uh, you know, again about people's rights to do different things and it starts to get sort of out of you know so I say what can I do I can say well, well I can say something about decibels I certainly can include there's a public right away right. well that's something that yeah, that, could, that could be Ms. So Ed's uh, uh, right unfortunately it's not council who does that it's the administration right. okay so, Ethan. Well, but also it would be nice as a showing of I guess support or solidarity for any of the rules. If there, I mean, I fully expect if, if those rules are enforced, there will be a, an aggressive backlash with inaccurate information provided as to what was happening and why. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I, I think I think you're right. I think that's part of what the what the difficulty is is that these every little part is very sensitive. I mean, there's nothing about regulation of French Quarter. I mean, um, Mr. Religious, you know, position now has a lot to do with the proliferation and, and encouraging proliferation of t-shirt shops, and that trying to discourage those kind of things is um, economic elitism. So, you know, we, at some point, leadership has got to step up and say, "I hear your position. We're just not interested in doing that vision of a community. We're just not." And it would be nice to have some support. Okay. I'm willing to do it, but. Uh, you know, I've got to have my colleagues here too. Sure. Ethan, you, I'm sorry, say that again? I was just going to bring it back to the speaker for my name really quick. Excuse me, about the idea about decimal levels. Why it makes sense to me to really focus on decimal levels because it's a solid thing that cannot be used in, in, in any other way, right? There's a solid limit that says you can do this, you can go this loud and go further, right? right? Your statements about sort of which genres of music are acceptable and which are not, then it becomes really problematic. I mean, I would point out. That bounce music is also indigenous in one of type of music. And when we start talking about what kind of music is allowed, it's, it's a club can play whatever they want, but it, it should be a level you can play whatever you want at this level, regardless of what you choose. And I think right, I right. Hear someone to hear a slippery slope kind of happening about, you like this, you don't like this, so let's figure out a way to make this happen and not that. And that's when things become very problematic. And that's what, for me, becomes very worrisome. Right. That this can be used in a very just, you know, so that we enforce ways to essentially target one genre, one group. Or, or, et cetera. So, as possible. Okay. Supreme Court case. Exactly. But, Dave, isn't it just a simple, as simple as just a putting a footnote on your table that basically says when you're doing these measurements, you can't have a street performer playing outside that club? Or in some reasonable distance from that. Club. Well, let, let's let's. Let, let, I have something I, I want to. I want to show everybody really quick, and then the maybe this will help us get a little better discussion. Because it will be on. It would be on third the club, obviously, to right. take that measurement when you got the TBC. Oh yeah, you, you wouldn't. You wouldn't be. The, the people who would be making measurements, let's say, to deal with the enforcement of clubs, would have to take into consideration any other sources that are nearby. Is that what you're saying? I'm saying they should. Yeah. Take what? Yeah, of course, that's right. But these loudspeakers that are in the street are actually producing some low-frequency sounds that are donating to the... And we talked about the distinction between the middle high and the low and the differences between them. So, again, uh, uh, we have the, the gap, and I, it's, I, I hope that we can all make it through that gap until the health department gets us in. And then management of courtyards is, is on the radar because it's, it's, it's not quite clear yet, but we, we'll see, again, what happens next. What do we see next? So let me show you something here that was, I'd like, what's that? I'd like to thank um, Ethan uh, for providing me with these. Um, this is from 1979, this is from 1990. These are things that people have figured out on their own. Okay? 